Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now, I've got some new kit. Something I wanted to get hold of for a while was one of these. It's a mandolin. Not a mandolin, but a mandolin. So these are those food slices. Now I've never used them before, but I've seen them used and I think they're really useful uh, for cutting vegetables evenly, consistently. Um, so let's take it out, see what we've got. Okay, so this is the produce that we're working with today. We have a turnip. I have no idea what this is going to come out like. Uh, one, there's two parts of this. One is an exercise in using our mandolin to see how well it works, how regular it cuts, how easy it is, how safe it is to use. I'm really excited about that. But two, I wanted to just see um, partly to make some crisp using different types of vegetables. So I'm going to make some crisp uh, out of some uh, turnip. I've never had that before. It could be gross. We'll see. I've got two different types of potato. I've got a sweet potato. I've got some carrots and then the idea is to try and make different types of crisp and also maybe some fries just to give an idea of the different kind of cuts that our mandolin can produce and it's even like a waffle setting which I'm quite excited to see as well. Okay so here we are now I'm gonna guess because I'm a bloke and none of us like reading instructions that is gonna be quite intuitive to use and it doesn't like it's got a lot of working parts so let's just figure it out. First of all we've got some PPE personal protective equipment I think I don't think there's anyone in the country or the world that doesn't know what that stands for now We've got our we've got our guard. I guess you your vegetables will stick onto that, and you'd press it down onto that like that. So that's the kind of theory. I mean, it looks kind of like it should be fairly straightforward. So let's see. Now I did a lot of research before buying my mandolin. I looked at a lot of reviews. So let's see if I chose correctly. So looking at it, let's have a look. Should I read instructions? Nah. Actually, I might have to read instructions because I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. All right, so I swallowed my manly pride and actually read the instructions, and I'm glad I did because it wasn't it wasn't obvious how to work this thing. So here we have it. We have a blade here, a super sharp blade that you you need to use your protective gloves for in case you slice off your fingers because they are crazy sharp. And what happens? You rotate this, and this lowers this sort of control plate here, up or down to varied amount of thickness, which varies from um, zero to about nine millimeters thick. And then on, in addition to that, you can actually rotate round so we get different blades. So it's got Julian there, or it's got sort of the carrot sticks there, or there you can put them both away, and then you've just got straight cuts. Okay, I've got my safety protective glove on. I've got my guard in place. Now the first question we probably need to ask is why do we need to use a mandolin as opposed to just using a regular knife? Now I've tried cutting potatoes nice and, and thin with a knife and you can cut them quite thin. Um, but the only difference to it really is, the main significant thing is, even though you can cut them quite thin, it's very difficult to cut each one exactly the same thickness. Now you may think, well what difference does that make? Well if it was just aesthetic, what it looks like, it wouldn't make a tremendous amount of difference perhaps. but when you're cooking something, i.e. if you're roasting it in the oven or if you're frying it, if something at a different thickness, it's going to cook at a different rate. So while one particular thin slice might be cooking perfectly, the other one might be burning if it's not the same thickness. So it's very important um, that everything's cut exactly the same thickness when you're cooking. This is the guard, which I'm going to strongly advise you use. So we put our potato in there. So now I'm going to have a go at slicing it and see what kind of slices we get. So here we go. Wow, this thing is effortless. What? Look at that. Have they all cut the same thickness? Wow, this thing is, man, I'm glad they've got a guard. This thing is slices like butter. This is crazy. And look, every single one, Pretty much the same thickness, not exactly, but fairly even. That's quite impressive. I think the first part's cut really well. When you get to the very bottom part, it gets a little bit harder to stay inside to cut them evenly. So let's just kind of work. Yeah. I think, yeah. So when you get down to about this kind of thickness, when you get down to this kind of thickness, it's difficult to, to continue to cut in here. 
So even with the protective glove on, it sort of caught the end of that glove. So my advice, do not use it without the guard at all because these things are, wow. These things are crazy sharp, but my goodness, it cuts well. Look how easy it's cut through that. That's crazy. There's, n there's no way you could cut stuff as quickly and as evenly as that. We'll put a medium to one side. Now, with potatoes, once you cut them, they suffer from something called enzymatic browning, where as soon as they cut this out to go brown, so these are gonna go a little bit brown. You can prevent that by adding a bit of vinegar or whatever, but I want these to be fairly dry when I'm frying them. So they are gonna go a little brown, but don't worry about that. So now, I'm gonna try the same thing, but on its, on its what appears to be its finest setting. Let's see how thin we can cut on the finest setting. Here we go. Oh, this thing glides. Wow. There is no way on planet Earth that you could cut this potato this evenly thin with a knife. Wow. I challenge even the, the most skilled chef. Look at that. Everyone exactly the same. This is incredible. Wow. And it's it's so quick as well. But again, we have the same problem. The only real, real thing with this is that we have the problem when it comes down to the very end, it's very difficult to cut the final parts uh, even as well. So that's, that is a real challenge. When you come down to the parts towards the very end, what do you do with them? So, and here's all our different cuts from our mandolin. It's just, it's just amazing to see how evenly is cut each one, even in a way which would be really, well, at my skill level, I'm not gonna lie, would be virtually impossible to, which would be virtually impossible to do by hand. Maybe if you're a top chef, you probably could, you likely could do that. But I mean, even them would struggle because these are all mechanically exactly the same. I mean, look at this. To cut consistently this thin, Right, so these are gonna make the base of our various different types of crisps or chips or fries or whatever we're gonna do. So now let's heat up some oil and see what these things actually come out like. 